Welcome back to Into the Breach, episode 16. We are halfway through the final battle, the last stand. We're in the second round, and we have to defend this bomb until it explodes, which is in four turns. Or is it three? I, this turn counter always confuses me, but I think... Yeah, we actually have a move here, so there's four turns until it explodes. So, we have... Six power on our power grid, so we could afford to take up to five hits there. Now, it's not great, but uh, you know, if we have no other choice, that's an option. And there's no civilians in these power pylons, so we don't actually care beyond the damage to the grid. We don't care if they get destroyed. We have currently four attacks that are targeting the pylons or the bomb, or in this case, both. And three units with which to resolve the situation. Let's figure out what we can do. So the first thing that springs to mind is... Oh, I was going to say, move here. I push the Firefly leader there, so it'll attack the Alpha Firefly for us. Now... That doesn't work for two reasons. Firstly, we just can't get there, so that's just not going to happen. Secondly, even if it did that, it only does four damage, it wouldn't kill the Firefly, and the Firefly's attack would happen. And alternatively, S could get there, push it, and damage it a little, and acid it, because we've got an acid tip on our uh, spear. If that happens, then the Firefly leader is sitting here, and this attack would hit the Blobber and the Bomb. Now, the Firefly Leader is the very first enemy. The environment happens first, the Rock Falls, which I don't think are going to help us. But the Firefly Leader will be slightly wounded, it'll be covered in acid, and it will kill the Blobber and the Blob for us, without damaging the Bomb. Because its attack just does damage, it doesn't push. So that's brilliant. That's with one attack, we've resolved three of our problems, and two of them permanently, the uh, Blobber and the Blob. And I'd really, I'd be really, I'm really glad that we get rid of the Blobs, sorry, the Blobber so easily, because they fire out another one of these damn Blobs every single turn. So, this is basically a no-brainer. I'm not going to do it just yet, in case, for some reason, I need to use Omar there instead of something. I just want to, or perhaps, in case the sequencing is wrong. Because we still then have the Scorpion, who's threatening one pylon, and this Alpha Firefly, who's threatening three, that we have to deal with. So I might need to do things in a slightly different order. We do have uh, maybe a mistake here in a flying uh, unit, which could potentially freeze one of these enemies. We could fly over the lava here and freeze from there. Now, hovering over lava is great, because it means we don't freeze ourselves, because the lava just immediately melts the ice. Because if we don't have that... If we're, if, we, if we're not over lava, or we're not taking an attack from an enemy, then we get kind of stuck. Alternatively... No, I can't go there. That's right. To push the Firefly... Uh, I was going to say, sit here, move here, ice the Scorpion, push the Firefly and break the ice, but then we can't get Esther to this spot to bash the leader, and Esther does really need to go here. If we're going to shoot the Firefly, we have to do it first. And... If we're going to freeze this guy, we need to do it from somewhere where we're going to take a hit. I can't, unfortunately, reach either of these spawn points. Like, I could sit on that one if I could reach it. Freeze him from there, and the spawn would break our ice, and we'd block an enemy, you know? Win-win. It's tempting to say go there, but the rock will fall here, killing any unit. It doesn't matter if we're frozen, we'll be dead, so that's no good. I don't really want to go up here because, you know, with four movement, we're very out of the way. We're just stuck to this, this little corner of the map. For the next turn. We do have flying, so we can get almost anywhere in kind of this this range. Not the worst. 
That is probably what I'm going to have to do. But it's certainly not the best. The other alternative is, can I freeze this Alpha Firefly instead of the Scorpion and then... Then just come up here. No, I can't shoot the Scorpion from here anyway because I'll kill the Pylons. So that's not a solution. That's just not a solution at all. So, I guess I've got to freeze the Scorpion. I've got to push him out of the way. And we'll bash him and he'll kill those for us. So we're not frozen, thanks to the lava. Let's get this shot happening first. Doesn't suppose it makes much difference which place I move to. And let's bash an asset, the leader. Who will kill two of our problems for us. Alpha five layer attack is gonna hit some stalagmites, so we don't care about that either. Sadly we couldn't use these rock falls to kill enemies, but that's the way it goes. Thank you very much. Right, so we're gonna have five enemies now. And one of them is a Scion Tyrant again, who will hit us for one hit point at the end of the turn. Fortunately, we healed up after the last mission, so we could, in theory, take the Scion Tyrant's hit if we need to. So he doesn't have to die. The Digger is not attacking anything we care about. We're going to move. We have to move because uh, there's otherwise tentacles will come here, kill us. We've got to move all our units so we don't die. So we can't just stay here regardless of what else we want to do. We don't have to kill a tyrant. He will do one hit point to us at the end of the turn. We can take that if we need to. It's better for us to deal with the enemies. And the enemies that we deal need dealing with are... Alpha Firefly, Firefly Leader, and the Alpha Beetle. That's three enemies, we've got three units. How do we make this happen? Omar can't get to the Firefly. He can get to the Leader. So we could cover either of these places, shoot the Leader, kill the Leader, and unfortunately, kill us as well. That's just no good at all. Now, why is that doing three damage to us? It's only a two damage attack. Oh, because it's pushing us. So that will kill us. So that's no good. But if we move out of the way first, then that kills the pylons. That's also not great. It's really not very great. Um, I, mean, I could quite happily deal with this beetle. Once it's charged this way, so it's charge into the lava and kill itself. That would be nice. And on the other side, there's nothing I care about. So that leaves the question of what can Prospero usefully do? Prospero can't sit here and just freeze the beetle because then it'll die thanks to the tentacles about to come up. And this corner's no use for freezing anything much. Could drop ice there, but uh, I'd rather, to be honest, much rather kill the Firefly Leader. We could come up anywhere up here and freeze something. We could freeze the Leader, or... No, we can't reach the Firefly. We could freeze the Tyrant, for whatever good that does. I don't know whether it does any good whatsoever. But if we do, then we're stuck, we're frozen. What about this? That will kill... Two pylons, and we can't. Prospero certainly can't do anything about it. That will kill two pylons, but we can make him kill himself. We don't worry about him. We can come here and bash the leaders to death. Maybe I just let that attack happen. So, chance of resist, not a good chance. Probably will get destroyed. But we won't be dead, and there's only a couple more turns afterwards. 
two more turns after this, so maybe that is the right thing to do. And our primary objective to defend the bomb will still be intact. Now, the bomb is also, I just realized, doesn't actually show until you hover over it. The bomb is also going to take damage from the tyrant. So that's less than ideal. But it's got four hit points. So it doesn't die immediately. It'll take one damage, so it'll be down to three. So again, we can probably allow that to happen this turn because I can't stop the Scion and all of this. Well, unless I freeze it, and then I'll find out what freezing him does, and then I'll be frozen next turn, and only able to repair next turn. And I don't think that's worthwhile. Maybe for the last turn that's a, that's okay. Uh, you know, push comes to shove, but not, not for this turn. So let's start by killing the one that we definitely want dead. I don't know how I missed that. Misclicked. Good, and that means whoever spawns here will already be covered in acid, which is also nice to have. So then... No, undo that. If I sit there, the diggers like to attack both us and the bomb, and I really don't think I want that. Or maybe I do. I don't know. Whatever, we'll find out. We don't kill the beetle, but it will kill itself. We have one more move, which is really a question of where do we want to go so we're in a better position next turn, and that's not a very interesting question. So, fingers crossed, the Firefly's attack will be resisted, but 70%. It's just not worth betting on. They're going to die. We're going to lose two good power. And we're all going to take one hit point of damage from the Tyrant. So let's just have it happen. New bits of lava. They could be handy. That poor digger is uh, an island. Beetle kills itself. Oh, the digger's on a bridge, that's alright. Get out. There's new rock falls. What's happening here? Lots of stuff. Well, this is a really bad turn. As it happens, we have a scarab threatening one pylon. We have another beetle threatening two pylons. We have the alpha firefly threatening us. To kill us, indeed, or if we move out of the way, threatening another two pylons. We're still, us and the bomb are still going to take damage from the tyrant as well. There's a bunch of falling rocks, but they're not really placed to be of use to us. We can't really push anything onto them, sadly, like the firefly. So what can we do? We could do that. We'll take one damage from the tyrant and one from the spawn, and we will die. That's no good. Um, oh wait, his attack, his attack has two things. Okay, that wouldn't kill, that would not kill the Firefly, and its attack would still happen, and it would destroy two pylons. But the Tyrant would be dead, and we would take one damage. Worth bearing in mind. On this side, we can kill the Tyrant and do one damage to the Firefly, but not, not kill it. And on the other side, we don't care about that. Although it will be destroyed this turn, so we, you know, we've got this turn to do it or not. This lava tile, interestingly, will become rock as the rocks fall into it. I think we need to freeze uh, the digger. I don't think there's any other way to deal with the digger. We can't really safely bash it without doing damage to the bomb, and we still won't even kill it. And the bomb is our primary objective. Sadly, we can't get to this lava tile to freeze it from because. Hovering over lava and freezing things is quite safe. We don't. Uh, we don't need to worry about thawing ourselves. Lava just thaws us instantly. The only other attack that we can sit in the way of um, to launch a cryo uh, to launch ice from is this firefly, and unfortunately, its attack is down this aisle. 
which is too close to the digger for us to freeze the digger there. So that's no good to us. We can't use the Firefly to free us while simultaneously using his eyes to block attack because we can't then freeze the one thing that we need to freeze. Oh dear. Why didn't the digger sit here where the rock was going to fall? It would be so much more convenient. So, whatever else happens, I have to freeze the digger. I have to protect the bomb. That's, that's the primary objective here. Even if we lose mechs, even if we lose pylons, we must protect the bomb. So, I can, I can easily negate this guy's attack. Push him here, he'll run into the lava. One problem down. Fortunately, that leaves me sitting here dying to the Alpha Fireflies attack. I can't get round, I can get round this side, but I can't get round the other side of him to push him the other way. And maybe mistake, can't, sorry not maybe mistake, uh, both ends, one, one, two, three, four, five, that's all her movement anyway, uh, his movement, sorry. Even if I wanted to, can't get there to fire both ways here. Which I might want to do, you know, just to deal with this. So that's two pylons under attack. One pylon under attack, two pylons under attack. Those those are under attack twice, unfortunately. It's from the digger and him, but that's which is not great. Um, we can't let the bomb get hit by the digger because it'll take two from the digger, one from the tyrant, and we'll be dead. If we kill the tyrant, Maybe we could let the Digger's attack happen if we can stop all the other attacks, because there'll be two pylons and two hit points off the bomb. And fingers crossed we can save the bomb next turn. And one more pylon. So can we stop... Well, if we let the Digger's attack happen, then we don't need to worry about the Scarab, because it's attacking the same spot. So it means we need to stop this attack, this attack, and kill the Tyrant. Can we do that? We bat him. We... Yeah. Shoot the tyrant and hurt the firefly, and then what? Do we... Lock a spawn and freeze the firefly? Uh, that's no good, because Esther will take two damage from the Digger and die. Not good. Certainly not great. It destroys the Tyrant, it permanently neutralizes the Firefly, we block a spawn, it kills the Beetle, and we're left with a Scarab, a Digger, and one other spawn. Three enemies and only two units to deal with them in order to save the bomb. Now, one thing we can potentially do as a last ditch effort next turn, we could in fact do it this turn in theory, but it's probably better as a last ditch. We could freeze the bomb. If there's only one attack against it, and that will save the bomb. It doesn't matter really, as long as we protect pylons, enough pylons, and protect the bomb, it doesn't matter if our mechs die. If our pilots die, they they came, they knew the danger, they were willing to sacrifice their lives for humanity. If only I could get around the other side of this guy, then I could push him here and those two would neutralize each other and he would still, he would get hit by the, uh, by the firefly and in fact, in a move of sheer brilliance, he would run here, push the Firefly into the lava, and fall into this lava himself. It would be such an amazing move. If only I could get around there. There's nothing like having one enemy run into the lava and push its friend into the lava. That would just be the ultimate. If only I had one more movement point. Just one more. I can get to the I can sit in the lava here, I can sit here, I just can't reach that. So. So if I don't freeze the digger and let its attack happen, let these attacks happen. Uh, the bomb survives to the next round. He's dead. He's neutralized. He's neutralized. He's dead. 
So she's dead. We block a spawn, but don't take damage from it because ice and we freeze the ice. We're left with the digger, scarab, and something else. And then we're betting on. As long as the scarab attacks a pylon, it's okay, we don't care, we can let it go ahead. If it attacks the bomb, and the digger attacks the bomb, then we're probably pretty screwed. I'm just looking to see if there's any other ways to deal with this. You can get there. Block a spawn, kill the tyrant, mostly kill the firefly, but not quite. Which means it's still threatening two pylons. Then... You can come here. Well, freeze the firefly. So its attack doesn't matter. Or even here, then you get, then your ice gets, well, there you block the spawn, then your ice gets broken by the digger. Choose. Whichever's worst. We're already blocking one spawn, so blocking another is probably better. Fewer enemies. So we'd have these two neutralized and one turn left. But we can't do that. We can't have we can't risk four pylons going down. We just don't have enough grid. If we had one more grid power, I might be willing to take that risk. But I just don't. I just don't. It's just not good enough. Freeze this one. From somewhere. Well, if it's from here, then we're kind of frozen and unable to move the next turn. That's not great. That lets us come here. Bash them. We could sit here and accept a rock fall and shoot this way, but that's just gonna do one damage to the digger. It's just not very good. It's not worth not worth dying for. Certainly not worth dying for. Come here. Shoot that way. Injure the firefly, kill the tyrant, then come here. Bash the firefly to kill it. We block a spawn and take one damage. Omar's still fine. Digger and Beetle's attacks go ahead anyway for two grid damage. Scarab is frozen. All our pilots are alive. Prospero is frozen. And will probably not get unfrozen. Can repair himself, but that doesn't do any good. So we're still left with two units, and... It is the two damage dealers. And unfortunately it's really, on the last turn, the cryo is really going to be more useful, I think, than just dealing damage. On the last turn, our job is to save the bomb. That's it. Save the bomb. Maybe save a pylon or two, if, you know. So, I think Esther is going to make a sacrifice here. Wait, 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 wait one fucking minute. Omar has a smoke drop. With one smoke drop, we can cancel both the digger's attack and the beetle's attack. And that's brilliant because they are the two we were having trouble getting at. How does that change things? How does that change things? We can then come up here, kill the tyrant. We can sit here. I'm just thinking, this is before we just throw the smoke. Sit here, freeze the firefly and block a spawn. Come around here, kill the beetle. No pylons under attack. None of our units take damage, none of our units die. That's great. Downside is, 
Well, we still have three enemies neutralized, so we have two and a new spawn. Yeah, heck yes, I'll do that. Heck. Just check if there's any uh, sequencing, other sequencing. No, right. As long as... Oh, fuck no, fuck no, fuck no, fuck no. Once again! They're moving twice, they're dropping... I can't have them dropping smoke and killing the tyrant. Well, maybe the tyrant stays alive. We can all take one damage. Maybe the tyrant just has to stay alive. Even if all our mech pilots die uh, next turn, in fact, the one we want to survive is Prospero. Because he's been to. This is his second final battle, and we would like him to survive to the next. And he's on three hit points, so we can actually take two hits from the Tyrant, and the other two might die next turn, if things go badly. So we can't kill the Tyrant, so the question is, where do we want to sit to fire off this attack? We probably want to stay here, near the bomb, to defend the bomb. I think that's our best place. So let's cancel some attacks with some smoke here. Not sure quite how the plane came to this underground cavern, but I'll take that. Um, we're gonna get hit by the turret, but that's better than uh, poor Esther dying prematurely. However heroic the sacrifice might be. What's our new enemy here? Well, there's a bunch of rock balls first. And a hornet! Well, an alpha hornet. I kind of expected the diggers to do that. What have we got? So we have a beetle attack I don't care about. We have this whole row, except except where the bomb is, of tentacles. So we definitely need to get out of here with uh, Esther. We can sit there and not do any useful attack, or we can sit here and not attack at all, but um, sit here we can at least repair ourselves. There we can't. For some reason you can't repair yourself in smoke, you just can't see. Uh, we have a digger. Good news. The digger is the only thing threatening a bomb. The hornet's only threatening two pylons. We could take that damage. We don't care about two damaged pylons. It's only if there's any more. The beetle chose to threaten us, not pylons. So it's going to run into the lava and kill itself. We can freeze the digger. We just have to move away from here. We can go to here or something. Or even up there. And freeze it. Doesn't matter we liked ourselves. This is the last turn. The bomb will explode. Doesn't matter that there's more spawns threatening. They are not going to happen. And that should leave Omar free to kill the tyrant, but it doesn't. Omar can't get to the tyrant. We can actually stop. So Omar has a choice. Do we stop the, the Hornet's attack by shooting it and knocking it out of the way? Or do we repair? I think we repair Omar and repair Esther, so neither of them die to the Tyrant's attack. Prospero is not going to die to the Tyrant's attack, his, his health is good enough. Two more pylons will be destroyed, that's fine. Let's just get out of the way there. Let's get out of the way here. You guys repair yourselves. We have no room for tyrants. No room for diggers. And that's it. Takes one damage. We survive. No oh, ice breaks. Bomb is almost destroyed, but not quite, importantly. Just not quite. Oh, we resisted! Wow. And now the Renfield bomb is about to explode, so we've beam the pilots back out of there. Well... 
That was definitely achieved only by the skin of our teeth. With some very lucky uh, enemy actions on that last turn. And that's hard mode as well. So that's the first, the first time I've played a game on hard mode and the first success on that final mission in hard mode. Wait, no, that, that's the second game on hard mode. Didn't I uh, die before that? Um, I can't remember. Well, that's a success. So, what time is it? Well, if I end here, that's a very, very short episode. So I think I'll skip the credits. Two mech HP, plus one move, and flying ability. He's done two final battles. I want to get him to four, because that's an achievement. Otherwise, if it wasn't for his achievement there, I'd probably be inclined to take Esther through the next timeline, because plus one move, plus one reactor are just great skills to have. She has no special skills, but uh, those level up skills are great. Or Omar. No, they, both just, they both got the best possible skills they could. But I'll take Prospero because of his flying ability, which could come in handy, and because I want to get him to four final battles. Alrighty, we only got one of the three uh, squad achievements for the Frozen Titans. We got we shot the Cryo Launcher four times in a single battle, but we did not kill three enemies with one attack of the Yannis Cannon, nor did we kill less than three enemies in a single battle. We did a two-island victory on hard, and we have not yet done a three or four-island victory with the squad, but it's time to choose a new squad and stay on hard mode. We only have three coins, so we can only choose Rusting Hulks or Zenith Guards. Now, Zenith Guards I've been playing on my other profile, and I've actually played on Rusting Hulks on my other profile as well. They both lost, and that was on normal. They're both quite difficult to work with. Uh, Rusting Hulks are about throwing smoke and dealing smoke damage and cancelling attacks. Zenith Guard are about flipping attacks, shielding uh, buildings and things, and using a piercing laser like the robots have. I'm kind of annoyed. Oops. Kind of annoyed I don't have more coins. Because I would love to try one of these three squads here. But I haven't been, you know, achievement hunting. I could do a random squad out of the set of mechs we have, or a custom squad out of the out of the set of mechs that we have, but uh I don't really don't want to mix and match this. I want to do something new here on the stream. I want to try one of these three. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I will end this episode here. I know it's a short one. I'll then go use one of our existing squads and just go farm some achievements for two or three more coins. Probably three more coins so that we have so that I can start next episode with a choice of any of those three squads. So thanks very much for watching. In the next episode. We'll be back with a brand new squad for a brand new timeline and with any luck, a brand new success.